Good, good evening. I think you're in Mississauga, right? You're in um, Ontario. I am. Yeah. 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 Where Whereabouts are you? I am in uh, Nova Scotia at the moment. Got it. All yeah. right. All right. Okay. And Amazing. I was trying not to fan out on Target Care and try not to get too hyperactive, but it's too late. Too late. Because I was telling him that you were going piece by chocolate, and or and, and I'm thinking, what the hell? What did you see the movie? And you're going, what? <laughs> and I'm thinking, what do you mean, what? And, and he goes, that's who we're talking to. I'm thinking, no shit. If this is the same guy, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the movie is so sweet. So so we're a little lucky, but you're lucky because we already got some of that out already. <laughs> Well, I'm going to repeat it because I don't care because I was so excited. I'm have... ready for it. Oh, my I'm God. Ready I'm so it. excited. Yeah, I'm going to give you shit. A little bit of, I'm going to give you a little bit of shit, though. Okay? No, and I'm not going to say it badly because I would have been exactly like you, but you should have helped your dad a little earlier in that. I did. I did. I don't just drag told you. it out so long. I told you this is drama. God. I told you this killing is me. drama. I'm thinking, I hope this kid does the right thing. He's killing me. <laughs> I told you this is all drama. We just agreed to it. You know what? Honestly, my friend. All the good sad. things are real. All the bad things are drama. They're okay, just, so you, you weren't being a bad boy. Like you were being no, a I'm nice not. boy. No, I'm not. No, no. That's a good boy, though. That's the power of a feature film. It's just you can claim all the goodness and you can throw out all the garbage. And so, what the hell do I know anyway? I was just <laughs> I, I thought it was such a. Phil, you need to watch it because you're. you're okay. You're in Kathy's uh, parents uh, are immigrants as well. So, it, like, all the immigrants yeah. will get it is that because it's a really cool story in that. You know, it, it, it shows that if you come and you try and you, you know, you stick together as a family, because that's typically, a, you know, a, again, outside of the drama, which we don't know, but I was mad at him anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it's just a really cool, it's a really cool play. Can you tell I'm excited, right? Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good. My wife's going to kill herself when I Love tell her to I talk to you. <laughs> so for you, so look, all we ask now for, you know, for 10 minutes or so, because we don't want to keep you all day. Is really and truly um, high level who you are. Why you're? Why are you speaking at the show? So obviously you're going to talk about your family and the the yeah. how all that stuff. So that's it. So like high level, it doesn't have to be detailed. But you're coming on a podcast. That's okay. going to be yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Excellent. Light her up, buddy. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you want, you you start. We'll we'll shut up and you can introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit. Okay. Right. Perfect. Um, Hello there, my name is Tarek Haddad. I am the CEO and founder of Peace by Chocolate uh, in beautiful Nova Scotia. Uh, my family and I, we came to Canada as Syrian refugees back in 2016, and we have been living the dream since then. And we're living the Canadian dream based on our values of peace, compassion, empathy, celebrating kindness, and how this country absolutely changed our lives just in a split of the moment when we lost hope entirely. So I'm uh, really looking forward to speaking about our journey of coming to, to Canada, but also about our experiences before we came here, the experiences of starting a chocolate business from the scratch and all the tactics and the strategies that we had to build and put in place to translate our values into an opportunity for our life for ourselves, but also for the community. You know, there is that narrative that immigrants come to Canada to take, or immigrants come to Canada to rely on the system. But we came here to really change that and really appreciate the opportunity that this country has a lot to offer to immigrants, but also immigrants have a lot to offer to this country. Um, you know, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, anger and anxiety in the world right now, and I believe that it can use a little bit of peace. It can use a little bit of comfort. It can use a little bit of learning stories of others who had to survive wars and persecution. So I'm trying to bring perspective into the conversation, and I'm trying to tell Canadians that this is absolutely very important to learn in this very specific point in time, because we are a country that if you are not indigenous or you have indigenous ancestors that they were born, or they've been here for tens of thousands of years, then you came from somewhere or your well, parents came from somewhere or your great grandparents came from somewhere. So right. my my message is, is my favorite quote of all time to share on all stages, no matter what I'm talking about. I'm talking about food, I'm talking about chocolate, I'm talking about peace, I'm talking about resiliency is to say that, um, you know, as the famous quote says, the Canadians are born everywhere. It just takes them a little bit of time to get here. And I really love the idea of us as immigrants that. building that, that connection to really, to really strengthen this country and strengthen our communities by living up to the values of compassion and empowerment. Because you know what? Everyone needs a hand. Everyone needs a hand. Yeah. And after the pandemic, I realized that there is a lot of people that they are shy of asking for help. 
So I we I believe that as a company we have absolutely mastered the the art of uh, how do you reach out to your community, asking them for the right help in the right time to help you grow, to help you also reflect and to help you um, you know be be in the business that that you want to be. But at the same time, bring in a little bit of community sense and social uh, you know aspect to your business because that's very important in today's age. We're not. We are not, uh, you know, running a business uh, anymore that's only focused on on profit or the the bottom line. We are running a business because we want to create an impact and leave a difference in in our communities and in the world. And there has been a lot of excitement about Peace by Chocolate within our experiences with large projects like a feature film based on our we business. Did a movie? You, really? A movie? Yes. <laughs> have you watched it, Kenny? I may mm -hmm. have. I, I'm not for sure. You know, with all the stuff we talked about record, is all recorded, right? So it goes on this. Are you kidding? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> well, I'm very happy. I'm very happy to hear that you watched it. Uh, although I really hope that you um, you can notice that uh, I'm not as handsome as the guy who played me I'm in the movie, close. but uh, but I'm taller than him. Now I'm I'm sitting down for this interview. I mean, if I had to stand up. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm taller than the guy, so we settled the debate. There you go. It's, uh, I really hope that everyone gets a chance to hear about our story, to uh, to watch our movie, to read our book, just to uh, bring a little bit of positivity in today's uh, today's world. Because I really, really the believe that it is like chocolate for those who are going to listen. You should watch it. Like really and truly, it's very inspirational because it's it's a truly Canadian type story in that to what we said before, this country is built on immigration. There's very few people that are indigenous to these to these lands. I mean, most of us came from, from elsewhere. So it is one of those ones that I think you really appreciate. But for those who don't know or haven't watched the movie yet, well, they will all watch this after this. Is um, should, yes. I hope so. Um, when did you guys come and from where? We came to Canada from um, Syria. We were uh, born in, in Syria. We we're all a, a Syrian family, but we had uh, been in Lebanon for three years before we came to Canada as refugees after we lost our home, after we lost our chocolate factory, after we lost our lives and livelihoods. And Canada was the only country that opened the doors for us. And that's why we ended up here. Um, although we have applied to almost uh, 15 countries around the planet, but Canada was the only country in the world that has accepted us. So well, really? we are very thankful, yeah. What? Yeah, very thankful. Nothing in Europe? Not even, not even for an interview. I applied literally to go everywhere. Oh. I applied to go to Portugal. I applied to go to Germany, to Sweden. I even wanted to go to Australia, but not even a single country really accepted our application. Oh, wow. And uh, the reason why we ended up well, in Canada- Well, screw those guys. We're better off this way. <laughs> well, we're happier. So yeah. It is, well. you know, yeah. a story that I don't share it quite often, but I'm here in the country because of a, a very small act of kindness. A cab driver who told me about this country, a cab driver who changed the lives not only of myself, but 32 members of my family are here because of him. Wow. I'm not going to wow. be able to meet him again. I don't know how he looks like anymore. I don't know his license plate, but he changed my life within a 20-minute ride back in 2015 and that's why i'm here wow. amazing so never underestimate this the power of smile yeah. and it's because it really really changes lives yeah just a little kindness a little love a little understanding a little compassion absolutely yeah. it really it really goes it really goes a long a long way so yeah. I'm, um, I'm i'm very excited you know because the business is growing uh, uh, it's a, a very success story right here on the east coast and uh I'm very actually looking forward to bring that energy from the East Coast to the West Coast and uh, just share it with, with everyone there because I haven't been to uh, BC since 2019, so before the pandemic. And I'm really excited. I'm, I'm now an ocean person. You know, I came from Syria. We didn't have an ocean there. Uh, so now, yeah. now you can't take me away from, uh, from the ocean. I mean, the Atlantic still is, is my thing, but I'm fine with the Pacific. Take me there. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's all good. The whole, all the country's good. It's all it's the country is perfect, absolutely. Good. But once you live by the ocean for for that it's, amount of yeah. time, I think you get attached to it and you get really you connected. You do, and it really inspired a lot of our flavors and a lot of our, uh, you know, our uh, uh, designs and our wraps right now that are heavily attached to the whole idea of being connected to the country and really being able to promote it. You know, as a business, you are an ambassador. When you make a product, no matter what you make, you're an ambassador not only to your company, not only to your values, but also to the place where you work, to the place right. where you're representing your community. So we have to, to elevate our games to really meet the standards that our country has expected from us and our community in Nova Scotia has also expected from us. And uh, 
I really love just food businesses, and I really love every business out there to realize that there is a big potential in in taking care of your people first. Uh, you know, I, I talk about people a lot. I talk about people because we have experienced horrible things in our lives, and kind people did kind things to us. Horrible people, they did horrible things to us. And when you live in a war, you have two perspectives, and I think you enjoy it both, and you just start, uh, I think, living your life differently. So I'll bring that. I think company. you bring that to the table. It's amazing. It's amazing. Because for the yeah. most part, I, you know, I, all I can appreciate of what you went through is what I saw on television, watching the movie, watching other movies. But what does that really tell me? Nothing. I watch and 20 minutes later, it's over for me. I, I didn't live it. Like, and, and I honestly, I mean, it probably made you who you are and made you a, a stronger person, I guess. But I wouldn't want to live it. I mean, it's just horrific. It's it's yeah. horrific. I mean, what you take out of it, God bless you, is that you you know you, you again. I I feel like I know you because I've watched that, that, that movie. <laughs> is is you brought that though? Like you you didn't. It, it is what it is, and it was what it was. But your dad came with all of you and said no. Absolutely. We're gonna do different. We're gonna make mm -hmm. this make this work. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, you know, families, families, stories and families, businesses, they have a different layer of uh, challenges and, and struggles. You know, you have different uh, visions, you have different uh, experiences, you have different journeys. And how do you bring all of these experiences together? And how do you bring people on people on yeah. board with what you are seeing? Because sometimes as a founder or as a CEO or as an executive, you see things that no one else sees them, right? Like right. no matter what you do, there's a lot of depth to the story and a lot of depth to the way that you operate from from anywhere in 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 the C-suite, right? In any company yeah. that no, not a lot of people really see. And when you're running a family business, that's double layer the challenge because you have uh, to have to navigate through these connections in a way that really keeps the values all intact and really make sure that everyone is on board with what you're trying to tell. Yeah, sometimes sons don't listen too well to their fathers and, you know, Things. Uh, I'm, just saying, I'm not saying it was you. I'm just saying. Sometimes <laughs> that's maybe, a movie. That's I don't a movie. know. Maybe yes, you see stuff like that in life. The I don't difference know. is the difference is actually is um, is that really our family they were all on board with the idea of uh, creating the business and getting to call it Peace by Chocolate. That was very important to us because um, since the moment that we landed here, we realized one thing: is that if there is no peace, there is no business. If there is right. no peace, there's no life. If there's no peace, you can't go to school. If you can't, there's no peace, you can't build your life. You you mm -hmm. can't you can't do anything. You can't have children, you can't raise a family. Um, you literally can't do anything. I can't actually even record this with you folks without uh, really knowing that, yeah, hey, the roof above my head is not gonna collapse on my brain in any second, you know, because of an airstrike or a bombing. So we can't imagine that yeah. here, right? Because we just yeah. don't it's just and so we don't know conflict like, the, like Canadians don't know conflict. What conflict yeah. do we have? Like me really. You know, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, the moment that we came to, to this country, it was very important for us to translate this in a in a in a, an understandable way. And our our way to to everyone in this country was through chocolate, because you know what? Chocolate is is universal. It's like music. Everyone understands it, right? Makes you happy. It, it makes you it makes you happy. It brings you joy. And uh, and also it it kind of connects to people always for for the sort of occasions, the gifting, the celebrations, you know, oh, you know, you you gift your mother Mother's Day gift, you 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 gift your uh, your spouse or your partner uh, a gift for Valentine's Day. The top one thing actually for Valentine's Day is chocolate. It's not flowers. Mm -hmm. It's not actually flowers. Mm -hmm. It's really chocolate. And the same thing for the holidays. The number one thing that people really gift is chocolate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep thinking about it. It's always associated with these happy things, right? Or trying to make people happy because if you think about it, when people are sick or not feeling well or a little depressed, it's funny that you gravitate. You know, try the chocolate or maybe make you feel a little bit better and just I don't know. It just it's chocolate, right? It just does it. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And you know what? For for uh, for what it takes, when we came here, uh, we thought of chocolate as well as as a, a medium, as a platform for new beginnings for us. And and you need to find your own new beginnings in in many ways. Uh, I've actually connected with many Canadians after the pandemic, those who were losing their sense of belonging. And I was just trying to tell them about our story, and then people were reinventing themselves back. You know, after after things started to look better in 2022, 2023, 
and then they just started celebrating uh, renewal, reinvention, and they have their own rebirth. And I think second chances are so powerful once you take them with a learning curve throughout what happened before. So this is really the, the thing that has inspired us before is because, uh, listen, we lost our factory back home to the war. We didn't want to lose it again here in the country. And that's why peace was so important to us because we called it peace by chocolate. We didn't even call it chocolate for peace because peace has to come first. If you don't have peace, you don't have yeah. chocolate. You don't have yeah. a business. And that's that what's sense. so important. That was actually, that was the, the key goal for us. And I, I really hope we succeeded. I really, really hope. And um, I think, you know, one of the, the biggest uh, things is, hey, guys, you, uh, I'm invited to go to, to BC to speak about Peace by Chocolate. So it worked somehow you know, well, I think it on totally, the other coast. I think it told, I'm so excited to actually hear Amazing. you talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to meet you, but I'm excited to hear what you have to say. And I think it's going to resonate. And I think people do need to hear it because, you know, we all have a tendency to get in our own heads and our own issues and not understand it. There's a lot of people come from a lot worse and look what they've done. It's it's how you spin the game, right? It's your your dad and mom and your family could have done different. They just persevered, and I mean, look what you got going now, right? It's a great. Yeah, story. and and then you have you uh you have a, a great opportunity to succeed in this country against all odds. Uh, yeah. Just a quick example, I really wanted to to give you both as we're talking about the business, which is really important. This is the thing I'm going to talk about the most. The moment I landed in Nova Scotia, I. I uh, I didn't. I didn't actually stay in the main city in the province, the capital, Halifax. Uh, uh, they took me to a small town called Aniganesh. It's a small town of five thousand people. Mm -hmm. So when the moment I went there, I didn't know anyone in the community. And then the next day, someone came to me from the casket, the newspaper, and then they would do an interview. They publish my 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 photo there on the front page, and you know my story. And at the time, I didn't know actually that we were going to even be able to start a business in twenty years. It took my father. 35 years to get the business registered and good to go back home in Syria. So I thought Canada is the same, right? There is no, there's probably system is going to take us too long. And and here I am doing the interview, publishing it, you know, everything was great. Uh, in a few days, I was having a, a coffee at one of the coffee shops in town. And then a guy would come to me and say, uh, Tarek, welcome to Canada. And by the way, I had a welcome message from 3,000 people. Everyone was so kind. Everyone was so lovely. Everyone was coming and shaking my hand on the on the sidewalk after I knew who I was, after I sent 4,000 friendship requests on Facebook after I came here because I'm trying <laughs> to build connections. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, so everyone funny. knew who I was. And then someone would come to me after a few days. I was enjoying actually a very nice cup of coffee. And then someone would come to me and say, Tarek, uh, I saw your picture in the casket. I saw your interview. I read it. It was nice in the beginning. He said, welcome to Canada. But then he said, why did you come here to take our jobs? And you know, there, there was that misconception that immigrants and refugees, they come yeah. to places like Nova Scotia that was suffering from shortage of jobs, right? The people that were leaving to Alberta or leaving to the North, they were trying to find jobs. And then I looked him in the eye and then I said, we did not come here to take jobs. We came here to create them. And Trust me, I had no clue what I was talking about back in 2016. I had, <laughs> I had no clue <laughs> that we were even going to be able to start a business. And then the fun part is the fun part that actually keep like keeps me thinking about it every single night since then is after a few months, we had no clue that we we're going to start a chocolate business. After a few months, we started a chocolate business out from the home kitchen. And then back in 2016, we opened our first chocolate shed, chocolate kitchen next to our house. And then our business was growing so quickly, so fast that we needed to hire employees. And guess who was our first employee? It was that guy. <laughs> no way. It was the guy who doubted us from the beginning. And wow. we were just trying to prove that actually yeah. immigrants are contributors. And I think, yeah. And I was so happy and I was really thrilled that the community has rallied around us. Uh, I believe in kindness. You know, the community is very kind. Uh, uh, Canadians are very well known for being so nice. And uh, I think uh, from, from what we have uh, done since 2016, it was all because of them. It's all because of kind people. Yeah. And, and you know, when you see the angry folks uh, on the news just, you know, yelling or shouting against the the values of, of uh, Canada or immigration, uh, I truly believe that the DNA of this country is 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 a kind one, is is an empathetic one, is a compassionate one. So we hope that truly believes in people. 
Yeah. And once you believe in people, magic can happen, right? Yeah. I mean, the country might be going through a tough time economically right now, that people might be suffering somehow. But when you compare it to other people suffering around the world, yeah. you know, when same. you compare it to someone yeah. who's 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 just counting down to death, uh, yeah. uh, it's been their life experiences for yeah. for ages that they don't have any support systems in place. Yeah. Canada is one of the G7. Many Canadians forget that Canada is one of the second is the second largest country in the world. Yeah. And that no one comes here to take away anything from anyone, but everyone comes here to contribute and to, to, to give back and to add, add absolutely. So yeah, I mean that's the whole point. Absolutely. Anyway, I we love it. I mean, we could, I could talk to you for hours. So yeah. this uh, was I can talk to you for 10 hours. I know. But I'm hoping that you come on to the podcast. <laughs> I will try yeah. not to be as excited because now I've at least met you. Probably not <laughs> I, will, I will watch the movie. Um, give, your dad let a you big, homework. give your dad a huge hug. Give your mom a Like, seriously, what a wonderful story. Yeah, I'm thinking. So, five so before you go, there, there is, there is um, some homework to, to be done. So if people want to watch the movie or read your story before they get there because i feel like this is kind of important to do so uh, totally. before you get to food pro if you're going where where do they find the movie and then where do they where do they read your story the movie is actually go to, yeah the movie no the movie actually is uh, is available uh, online video on demand um it is okay. uh, you can uh, just visit the movie uh, website peace with chocolate uh, film.com and you're okay. going to be able to really find where to watch it. But for it's available online streaming. It is um, on Crave. I think it's it available on think Prime. Too. Yes, it is yeah. available on on um, on Prime. Yeah. Um, anywhere okay. that you can find video on demand, uh, you will be able to certainly uh, get your hand on it. And we are trying to actually bring it to uh, to many more places. We were actually on major airlines in the country. We're now in Canada. If you are traveling to come to the to the show, look it up on airlines. It might be on your airline that you're coming you're coming on. Uh, we're trying to actually put it everywhere and so far we have been really uh, really uh, uh, lucky to have been uh, found you know we have found the support that we we did because uh, it's incredible really how everyone was connected to it but yes absolutely if you're coming to to the uh, conference if you're coming to food pro please do uh, watch the movie beforehand uh, because you're going to connect to the story on a different level if it's not a whole uh, story. if you have the book in your library bo read the book uh, yeah. we have a detailed book uh, I don't know actually. If you're reading one page a day, probably you're not going to make it uh, until the, the, the food pro. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but read the, faster, if you read, read faster. if you uh, if you look yeah. look us up uh, online, um, if you even go to our website piecebychocolate.ca, we have some uh, short videos and short clips that can introduce you to the story okay. as well. Um, it will make it a little bit more relevant um, as you're coming to to attend the session. Okay, okay, guys, you got your homework. Um, Tariq, thank you very much. And then we'll see you at Food Pro. It's amazing. My pleasure. Thank you very much, gentlemen. No, thank okay. you. It was Thanks very, so very, much. very nice meeting. Take care. Take care. Give, give your papa a hug. Give dad a I hug. I will. Absolutely. 100%. Seeing him, seeing him shortly. Sounds Take good. Care. Take Bye. care, my friend. We'll chat Take care. soon. Phil, you hang Bye. on. Tariq, enjoy the afternoon yep. or evening.